Okay, in this um, program I'm going to talk about um, getting information from the user, user input, um, and I'm going to talk about when you combine together uh, numeric and string data types uh, because there's a lot that you have to be aware of. So you can see in this example I have a double variable called number one and a string variable called name. Notice if you declare string variables you have to include the string library because string is not a true built-in data type comes from a library. You can see the difference in the color here. Double is a darker blue. Uh, int is a darker blue because they're actually built into the programming language where string is a lighter blue because it's coming from a library. So here I'm asking the user to enter their name. Right? See a name, enter a number, see a number one, and I'm just displaying the name and the number. So I'm going to run this. and I'm going to enter my name and I'm going to enter a number and then it's going to display the results. So that looks good. But what you need to be concerned with is when you use a CN statement with strings. A CN statement, what it does is um, it will read up to the first white space character. And technically what it does is if it sees any white space characters in the input stream, it'll skip over those then it'll read the data up to a white space character. And that'll become important in a minute. Um, so if I was to put my entire name here, like Debbie space Sorrentino, the CN statement's just going to read Debbie, and then it's going to hit the white space character, and then Sorrentino's going to stay in the input stream, and it's going to try to read it in here. I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, see how it didn't prompt me to enter the number in because it saw something in the input stream which was Sorrentino and it tried to pull that in so it did say your name is Debbie and then you get this um, garbage value uh, for the number. Uh, so what you have to do when you're working with strings that might have spaces in them, you can't use a CN statement. And it's true, most spaces have strings in them, like people's names, people's addresses. There's sometimes you can use a CN statement, like if you're reading in a month, for instance. None of the months have spaces in them, so you might be able to get away with a CN statement. But uh, what you'll use instead is a get line. So this get line, and here's your syntax, get line, in parentheses you put cn, comma, and your string variable. A get line will read the entire string with the spaces in it. So it's used again in place of a cn statement, but you can only use a get line when the variable is a string. You can't use a get line for doubles or integers. So let me run it now. And... Now you can see it runs as it should. Okay, so this really can tend to get pretty tricky when you're combining get lines with CN statements. A CN statement will leave um, a white space character, like if you have a number and you type that number and you hit the enter key, it'll leave that enter key um, in the input stream. And at sometimes if you have a bunch of CN statements in a row, that's not a big deal because CN statements will kind of skip over the leading white space characters and then they'll move on to the next um, data item. But get lines are a little bit different because what a get line does is it reads up to um, an end of line character. So I'm going to show you where this can start to be a problem. I'm going to declare another variable. And number two, and I'm going to ask the user to enter number two. And then I'm going to come down here and display both of these. Okay. Now, this looks like it should work, right? Enter a number, then read it in. I use a CN statement for my double. Enter the name with a get line. 
and enter a number, um, number one. So based on everything I told you, this appears that it should work. So let's run it. And you'll see right there it doesn't work. I enter the number, then when it says enter your name, it goes right past that and it looks for another number. So the reason that this isn't working, I want you to think about what I just entered at the keyboard. And uh, let me just kind of put it over here. Okay, so what I entered, sorry, what I entered at the keyboard was something like this. Um, I entered a number, right? Then I hit the end of line character, right? I hit the enter key. Uh, then I entered a name. Then I hit the end of line character, right? I hit the enter key. Then I hit another number, and then I hit an end of line key. Um, so what's happening here in this number exactly? C in statements will take the number five. So this is what's going in the input stream. This is what's being entered from the keyboard and they'll store it in number two. And it leaves, when it takes the five out, this is what's left in the input stream. How a get line works is a get line reads up to the first end of line character. Well, look at that. There's an end of line character sitting right there. So the get line goes, OK, I'm done. I'm going to store the empty string in name. So that's the problem that's happening in this code. So to fix it, I can put in what's called the cn.get. Okay? So after it takes the 5 and it stores it in number, a cn.get will take the very next item in the input stream and take it out. And then my get line will read and store Debbie Sorrentino. And then it'll hit this CN statement. Well, CN statements, they will ignore any leading white space characters, and that's a white space character. Then it'll read and store the six, and it'll stop right there when it hits the next white space character. So it can really get a little bit tricky. So what do you need to know? You need to know if you are using a string variable, like name in this case, and that string variable um, is something that might have spaces in it, you need to use get line in place of a CN statement. Uh, the other thing that you need to know is that if you combine CN statements and get lines in the same program, um, when you have a CN and then the next input statement is a get line, you ne uh, generally need to put a CN dot get here. So notice at the end, if I was to enter a third number, okay, down here, and I run this. Everything should work fine. Okay? Because you don't have to worry about this when you're going from you know, a CN statement, then the next one's a CN statement. You don't have to worry about all of this. The only time you have to worry about it is when you go from a CN to a get line. You generally have to put that cn.get there. And how do you know? Well, when you run your program, if you don't have the cn.get, it's not going to work correctly. Right? It's going to look like this. You know, what happened to my name? You should think to yourself, I probably need a cn.get somewhere so that I can get the whole name in there. Okay? Uh, as soon as I show students this, they tend to start to put cn.gets everywhere. Uh, which is not a good idea, right? You don't want to do that. 
You only want to put them when you have a CN and then the next operation is a get line. That's it. So again, it can get uh, quite tricky. In the current project, you have to get um, seven input items from the user. You have to get a month. Okay. And um, you have to, the month would be okay to use a CN statement for, even though it's a string because there's no spaces in it. Then you have to get a city, so you'll need a get line. And then you need to use, um, you need to get a temperature, right? So that'll be a CN statement. And um, same thing as you go through. So you are going to have to combine CNs and get lines, and you're really going to have to um, think about it carefully.